This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading is by Michael Sirwa. Michael.Sirwah, S I R O I S dot com. Penguin Island by Anatole France. Book Two The Ancient Times. Book Two, Chapter Eleven The Dragon of Alca. Continuation. On that day, Kraken came back to his cavern sooner than usual. He took from his head his sealskin helmet with its two bull's horns and his visor trimmed with terrible hooks. He threw on the table his gloves that ended in horrible claws. They were the beaks of seabirds. He unhooked his belt from which hung a long green tail twisted into many folds. Then he ordered his page Elo to help him off with his boots. And as the child did not succeed in doing this very quickly, he gave him a kick that sent him to the other end of the grotto. Without looking at the fair Orborosia, who was spinning, he seated himself in front of the fireplace, on which a sheep was roasting and he muttered, "'Ignoble penguins! There is no worse trade than a dragon's!' "'What does my master say?' asked the fair Orborosia. "'They fear me no longer,' continued Kraken. "'Formerly every one fled at my approach. I carried away hens and rabbits in my bag. I drove sheep and pigs, cows and oxen before me. Today these clodhoppers keep a good guard. They sit up at night.' Just now I was pursued in the village of Annis by doughty laborers armed with flails and scythes and pitchforks. I had to drop the hens and rabbits, put my tail under my arm, and run as fast as I could. Now I ask you, is it seemly for a dragon of Cappadocia to run away like a robber with his tail under his arm? Further, incommoded as I was by crests, horns, hooks, claws, and scales, I barely escaped a brute who ran half an inch of his pitchfork into my left thigh. As he said this, he carefully ran his hand over the insulted part, and after giving himself up for a few minutes to bitter meditation, What idiots these penguins are! I am tired of blowing flames in the faces of such imbeciles. Oberosia, do you hear me? Having thus spoken, the hero raised his terrible helmet in his hands and gazed at it for a long time in gloomy silence. Then he pronounced these rapid words. I have made this helmet with my own hands in the shape of a fish's head, covering it with the skin of a seal. To make it more terrible, I have put on it the horns of a bull, and I have given it a boar's jaws. I have hung from it a horse's tail dyed vermilion. When in the gloomy twilight I threw it over my shoulders, no inhabitant of this island had courage to withstand its sight. Women and children, young men and old men, fled distracted at its approach and I carried terror from among the whole race of penguins. By what advice does that insolent people lose its earlier fears and dare to day to behold these horrible jaws and to attack this terrible crest? And throwing his helmet on the rocky soil, Perish, deceitful helmet! cried Kraken. I swear by all the demons of armor that I will never bear you upon my head again. And having uttered this oath, he stamped upon his helmet his gloves, his boot, and upon his tail with its twisted folds. Kraken, said the fair Orborosia, will you allow your servant to employ artifice, to save your reputation and your goods? Do not despise a woman's help. You need it, for all men are imbeciles. Woman, asked Kraken, what are your plans? And the fair Orborosia informed her husband that the monks were going through the villages teaching the inhabitants the best way of combating the dragon, that according to their instructions the beast would be overcome by a virgin, and that if a maid placed her girdle around the dragon's neck, she could lead him as easily as if he were a little dog. "'How do you know that the monks teach this?' asked Kraken. "'My friend,' answered Orborosia, do not interrupt a serious subject by a frivolous question. If, then, added the monks, there be in Alca a pure virgin, let her arise. Now, Kraken, I have determined to answer their call. I will go and find the holy male, and I will say to him, I am the virgin destined by heaven to overthrow the dragon. At these words Kraken exclaimed, How can you be that pure virgin? And why do you want to overthrow me, Orborosia? Have you lost your reason? Be sure that I will not allow myself to be conquered by you. Can you not try and understand me before you get angry? 
sighed the fair Orberosia, with deep though gentle contempt, and she explained the cunning designs that she had formed. As he listened, the hero remained pensive, and when she ceased speaking, Orberosia, your cunning is deep, said he, and if your plans are carried out according to your intentions, I shall derive great advantages from them. But how can you be the virgin destined by heaven? Don't bother about that, she replied, and come to bed. The next day, in the grease-laden atmosphere of the cavern, Kraken plaited a deformed skeleton out of osier rods, and covered it with bristling, scaly, and filthy skins. To one extremity of the skeleton, Orborosia sewed the fierce crest and the hideous mask that Kraken used to wear in his plundering expeditions, and to the other end she fastened the tail with twisted folds, which the hero was wont to trail behind him. And when the work was finished, they showed little Elo and the other five children who waited on them how to get inside this machine, how to make it walk, how to blow horns and burn tow in it, so as to send forth smoke and flames through the dragon's mouth. End of chapter 11